Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Bitcoin update. I'm happy to see that Bitcoin is doing quite well today. We're showing a lot of strength here after the CPI release yesterday. Of course, yesterday we posted a video just a few hours before CPI and said, basically, wake up as per the title right here. These two triangles reveal everything. Those two triangles are now broken to the upside as mentioned in that video. So that was a great video there yesterday, just perfectly outlining what would occur over the next 24 hours. We've seen that quite well now. We've seen the breakout of those triangles. And now we need to give you an update of the situation. Is Bitcoin in the clear? Is it out of the woods? How is Bitcoin going? Where's the next target? Those are the kind of questions we're going to look into today. Before we get into any of that though, go ahead and check out the VIP group on Telegram. Uh, again, on Telegram down below, you'll find the link to an information and results page for the VIP group. That is this page right here. You can find the pricing details. You can find information about what you get for joining the group, which is uh, access to a group chat with the trading plans being posted and also access to a group chat where we discuss the market 24 seven with other VIP members. So an exclusive community there. And of course we have the PDF of all the historical trading results there. Everything's transparent and ready to go. Uh, guys, without further ado, let's dive straight into the actual content itself. Now, you might be surprised to, to, to kind of find out that this isn't actually going to be a too complicated video. In fact, we, we've just got really a few key things to go over. First and foremost, why has that pump occurred? Well, the pumps occurred, of course, because of CPI. Well, that's one of the reasons, or at least the triggering reason why it occurred. We saw CPI come in, which is the inflation data in the United States. It came in uh, as expected, which was good for the market. Uh, as you can see, the S&P 500 very much pumped upwards massively. That daily candle was quite big. In fact, if we go to the hourly chart, we can see exactly when CPI came out. Just a big green candle there at CPI, uh, pumping the market right upwards here over here as well. Um, so, you know, CPI came in good, uh, pumped the S&P. S&P is now at new all time highs, which is great to see. And it definitely is targeting higher prices. Obviously, if the S&P is in a good position, generally speaking, uh, most assets going to be in a good position. Bitcoin being amongst those assets, risk assets in general. Uh, the macroeconomic situation has kind of favored us in this scenario and it's led to an S&P pump. It's also led to a Bitcoin pump. And the key levels we looked at on Bitcoin yesterday were, of course, uh, this triangle here, the 12 hourly chart, by the way, such an important chart. It's really been uh, the be all end all for, uh, for a lot of the recent Bitcoin moves. You know, we've drawn lines in this chart multiple times over the last month or so. Uh, just looking at lines like this line from here, breaking down led to a drop on Bitcoin downwards from 69K to around 57K. There was another couple of lines we looked at very intensely. The fact of the matter is the 12 hour chart's been very, very important on an RSI perspective for Bitcoin. And it's kind of perfectly predicted where each move is, uh, you know, whether we've seen a confirmation of the move to the upside or the downside. The last two times we've seen breakouts on the 12 hourly chart RSI lines, we've seen significant corrections. Uh, we've now seen a breakout upwards and it's led to a significant pump. Uh, the breakout on the 12 hourly chart RSI was discussed yesterday uh, that preceded the price action breakout. And upon this RSI breakout, uh, we entered long positions and those long positions end up playing out favorably or I enter long positions, they end up playing out favor uh, favor favorably, I should say. So both the triangles are broken, the 12 hourly chart triangle and the price chart triangle, great to see. We've also edged above the Gaussian channel uh, if we bring up the Gaussian channel on the 12 hourly chart, what you can see is that we had Gaussian channel resistance very much clamping Bitcoin down in the same way that it was holding Bitcoin to the upside over here. It was, uh, you know, clamping Bitcoin down as resistance over here. We've now broken the center line. And generally speaking, when you break the center line of a Gaussian channel, it leads to a move through that Gaussian channel. So that's what we can expect. We can actually expect Bitcoin to continue upwards here and move through this Gaussian channel uh, all the way up to our, our major targets. What are our major targets right now? Well, I can tell you right now that a short-term target I have is currently sitting around 67K. That's my short-term target, right? If we look, go, for example, four hourly chart, we'll get a bit of a more diluted view here just to get a very good understanding of what's actually going on. Uh, we go four hourly chart and we'll draw in this pink line right here. That is 67,000. You can see very clearly that was the resistance level. Like we kind of had like this neckline. We broke down below it. It was a... Uh, Support zone before we broke into this kind of cut formation. It acted as resistance on two separate occasions. It's acting as a resistance line right now again. So our short-term major level is very clearly 67K. And what you'll notice if we go back to the 12 hourly chart, 67K is also the top of the Gaussian channel. Uh, and yeah, it's a very major level. If we go to the volume profile as well, it's also a pinnacle on the volume profile. So I would say that in order for Bitcoin to be out of the woods fully, okay, we need to get above 67K. We need to be crushing that short-term level. 
Uh, and furthermore, if we want full confirmation of new all-time highs, 69K is the target because 69K uh, is actually the weekly chart uh, all-time high uh, from 2021. So we go to 69K, for example, weekly chart all-time high from 2021. You can see it right there. I've just circled it. Um, so yeah, look, 67K is our short-term target. Very much need to get over that level. Uh, until we get over 67K, I would not be personally taking any long positions. I'd be holding back because I think we've already seen the majority of that short-term move. We now need the validation that a medium-term move is going to take place. Uh, and in a medium-term move, of course, you're talking about moving into the upper part of the range. Because uh, right now we're in the lower part of the range, 67K being that dividing level as well as 69. So Look, overall, again, 67K is the major short-term level. I'm keeping my eyes on that level. I'm not really acting until that's broken. Uh, and then 69K would be a great thing to get a week we can or close above uh, this week or, or maybe even next week if it takes that long. But I would like to see it this week personally. Uh, what else have we got? Well, we can look at the weekly chart a bit more extensively. Uh, and we can see very clearly that we actually had a bearish trigger on the weekly chart. It was on the MACD. So we had the, the conversion line cross underneath the signal line, which is generally indicative of red price action, generally indicative of bearish price action. We saw that occur back here in 2021. Uh, over here led to a drop downwards. Same thing over here in November led to a drop downwards. Uh, but we've also seen times, for example, where the triggers haven't led to drops downwards. And that was just as recently as October last year. We saw a bearish trigger, for example, over here. Sorry, not October. It was over here in uh, June and July. We saw a bearish trigger and it didn't actually lead to a drop. It just led to sideways price action and it kind of flattened out. There was no momentum behind that move and we ended up going upwards. I'm hoping the same story uh, will occur here. I'm hoping this will flatline and will continue to be upside. It's not unheard of, not unprecedented at all. Uh, but right now that, that bearish trigger is a little bit of a concern, but not too much of a concern really because MACD is not exactly the most reliable indicator. Again, you see bullish triggers and bearish triggers fail quite often, for example, over here. And we saw a bullish trigger fail over here in March. We actually went downwards there. So again, not an extremely reliable indicator. When we're weighing it up against all the other evidence as well, uh, it becomes an, a minuscule factor. Right now, if we're talking macro, uh, the macro looks pretty phenomenal, really. I mean, we look at, you know, for example, two-week chart. We've got, as I've said, spoken about many, many, many times now, a 13-year ascending support line here in yellow that we just tested at 57K and bounced very strongly off of. As long as we're above that line, we're, we're very much in the clear. Same thing can be said about bull market support band, which supports the exact same level. And same thing can be said about the pie cycle indicator through which it's yellow and green uh, center lines are uh, supporting, again, that exact same level at 57K. Uh, so our invalidation uh, level for this bull market still stands in the same place. Uh, 57K, in my opinion, uh, is the, probably the lowest Bitcoin can go while remaining super healthy. As long as we're above 57K, we're in a great position. But I wouldn't really be wanting to see Bitcoin come back down and test it again, especially after this recent move and breakout. I would love this move and breakout to be the move that ends this sideways consolidation and really sends us to a new all-time high. That would be great. Uh, but in order to fully confirm that and fully you know, really get over the final hurdles. We really need to be taking 67K especially uh, and maybe even 69 on a weekly. But, you know, right now, all eyes are certainly on 67. Until we cross 67, we still are at risk, unfortunately, of a rejection back downwards. But it's not the likely scenario. The likely scenario is we do break that 67K level. That is the likely scenario according to the TA right now. Uh, so basically, just a general update on what the short term, you know, what's happening with the short term. Really not too much to get into in terms of nitty gritty uh, you know, we're not really getting too deep in the chart, deep, deep into the charts today. Just a quick little update here. Everything is going well. The breakout went very well, uh, and we're seeing strength here on Bitcoin. We're not quite out of the woods yet, but we're seeing strength, that's for sure. So I'll keep you updated in tomorrow's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Go ahead and check out our three exchanges that I advertise on this YouTube channel. You can pick any one of them. All the information for them is down below, the differentiating factors. But all these exchanges uh, share attributes. They're all very low in trading fees. They they all have reserves information. Uh, BingX and BitGet have protection funds in case they are hacked. Bit Bitunex is a, is a smaller exchange, uh, but it's got a lot of promise in my opinion as well. So all those links are down below. 15% trading fee discounts for life. Signing up to each of those exchanges there with my referral link, you'll get that 15% trading fee discount just with my link down below. Uh, and then also, 
bull market sale for the crypto academy we're teaching people how to trade in the become a trader 10 unit course so check that out if you're interested guys uh, all the information's on the website again if you want to learn how to trade educate yourself on ta uh, so you can take advantage of future price action as best you can that's where you can do it and then finally our vip group as we mentioned at the start of the video trading plans are on there thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed i'll catch you tomorrow